This is section 5.1, association and confounding. So let's start by saying we want to compare two groups. So for example, one study wanted to know, are metal bands used for tagging harmful to penguins? So researchers investigated this by using a sample of 130 penguins near Antarctica. The penguins had already all been tagged with RFID chips. That's important because the fact that they're already tagged with RFID chips means they can keep track of them with or without the bands. Okay, so we want to know if when we put the metal bands on them, are they hurting penguins? So 50 penguins received a metal band and 80 penguins did not. After four and a half years, they evaluated how many penguins were still alive in each group. 16 out of the 50 metal band penguins were still alive. 48 out of the 80 penguins without bands were still alive. Now, when we get something like this, we like to display it in a nice table. So across the top, you can see we have the penguins that have bands or penguins without bands. And then the rows are the penguins that are still alive or not alive. So when it said 16 penguins with the bands, so right here, 16 out of 50 bands, penguins were still alive. So we have 16 that were alive out of 50 total. I had to figure out this 34 by just using subtraction. The 16 plus 34 is 50. And then it said 48 out of 80 penguins were still alive that didn't have bands. So no bands, I put 48 penguins were alive and there were 80 penguins total. And then I could just subtract to figure out that 32. You can also see things like after the four and a half years, 64 penguins were alive out of the entire group. And there were 66 penguins that were dead after the four and a half years out of the entire group. So when we look at this, let's remind ourselves, go back a couple chapters. What were the observational units? Those are the units that we're actually collecting data on or doing an experiment with. So in this case, it is the actual penguins. They are what we collected data on. Let's see, what are the variables? And let's classify them. Okay, so I think we have two variables here. The first one is whether they had a band or not. So if they have a band, yes or no. And that would be categorical. And the other variable would be if they were alive at the end of the four and a half years. So that's, again, a yes or no. So that would also be categorical. There are only two categories, so you could even be more, you could be even more specific and say that it is binary. Now, if we want to compare, so remember, our goal was to say, did the metal bands hurt the penguins? Okay, so maybe we want to compare. Can I just compare the numbers that there were 16 alive with a band and 48 alive without the band? Well, I can't just compare those two numbers. That wouldn't make sense because there were less penguins that got bands to start with. So there's going to be less that are alive. Okay, And so because there were 80 penguins without bands, 50 penguins with bands. So there were different sample sizes in each group. We don't want to just compare those numbers 16 and 48. Okay. So instead, we can compare conditional proportions. So we can look at what proportion of penguins with metal bands were still alive. Okay. So to do this, when we say what proportion of penguins with metal bands, and we're going to practice finding these conditional proportions, if I want to say what proportion of penguins with metal bands, that tells me I only care about the penguins with metal bands. So I actually like to rewrite this or print it out okay, so I can draw on it. So first I'm going to say I only care about penguins that have the metal bands. So I circle that column and that's all that I care about now. And then I look at what proportion of those were still alive. So I say there were 16 penguins that were alive out of 50 with bands. So 16 divided by 50 should give me 0.32 or out of the penguins with the bands, about 32% of them were still alive. Okay. Let's see, now what proportion of penguins with no bands were still alive? So now I'm only looking at penguins that had no bands. So I only look at this column. Okay. And of those ones, which one were alive? So there were 48 alive out of 80 without bands. So we do 48 out of 80, which should give me 0.6. So when they had bands, 32% were still alive. When they didn't have bands, 60% were still alive. That does seem like quite a big difference. 
Okay, but let's keep looking at some things. We could look at the data in a segmented bar graph. I believe we did this earlier in the semester. We could have two groups, bands or no bands. Okay. And you can see that the ones that were alive, it was about 32% that were alive when they had bands. But when they didn't have bands, it was 60% that were alive. Okay, and so you can see there were different percentages that were alive when they had bands versus when they didn't have bands. So it's just a way to look at that visually. Now, based on the conditional proportions, do you believe that the metal bands seem to be hurting penguins? Okay. And so for this, I'd probably write something like 32% of penguins with the metal bands were alive, but 60% of penguins without bands were alive. Okay, so those, diff those proportions are different. So I think the metal bands are hurting the penguins' chances of living, or chances of being alive, somehow. I don't really know how, um, but somehow those proportions seem so different. I think the metal bands must be doing something to hurt the penguins here. So what we want to do is we want to investigate, or we were investigating a connection between metal bands and penguin survival rates. So we want to know if the metal bands are associated with penguin survival rates somehow. So two variables are associated if the conditional proportions are different between the groups. So that means coming up here, our conditional proportion for metal bands was 32%, okay, but without bands, it was 60%. So those conditional proportions were different in my different groups. Okay. You can also think about it as two variables are associated if knowing something about one variable gives you information about the other variable. So like knowing they have a band probably tells you they're going to be less likely to be alive. It gives you information. Okay. Sometimes we can show cause and effect. So cause and effect would say putting a metal band on them will cause them to be more likely to die. But this is hard to do. We have to, we'll get into this in the next section. We have to have experiments and we have to have random assignment and there's all these things to show cause and effect. Um, we can't always do that. Lots of times we have to settle for just showing that they're somehow associated. So associated is like a lesser form of cause and effect. It's saying somehow they're related, somehow they give us information about each other, but I can't actually say cause and effect. When we have two variables in a study, we often consider one the explanatory variable and the other the response variable. So we're going to use the explanatory variable to explain or somehow predict the response variable. So the explanatory variable is the one giving us information about the response variable. Okay. And usually our study is looking for evidence that the explanatory variable causes or is associated with changes in the response variable. So we're trying to look to see is it associated, is it cause and effect. So for the penguin study, what is the explanatory variable? Which one were we using to explain something? That was whether or not they had, they had the bands. So whether or not they had bands. And what is the response variable? That is whether or not they were still alive. And do the variables seem to be associated? Well, we said earlier that the bands didn't seem to be hurting them because we looked and they had different proportions. So the conditional proportions are different for the groups. So the variables are associated. Or you could say something like having metal bands is associated with lower survival rates. Okay, because the ones that had metal bands were less likely to survive. We can't actually say cause and effect. There might be something else going on, but we can say that they're associated. So the thing that could be going on, it's often called a confounding variable. So a confounding variable is a variable related to both the explanatory and response variables in such a way that the confounding variable's effects on the response variable cannot be separated from the effects of the explanatory variable. So this is just a little diagram saying the confounding variable affects the explanatory variable in some way and it also affects the response variable. And so it looks like the explanatory variable is affecting the response variable. We can say that they're associated with each other, but it's actually the confounding variable causing these changes. <clears throat> so one of my favorite things, examples I've ever seen of this, is if you look at shoe size of kids in elementary school, okay, this is the explanatory, 
Okay, it seems like it is very associated with their reading skills as the response. Okay, and in fact, if you were to look at shoe sizes and reading skills and put them on like a scatter plot, which we haven't learned how to do yet, okay, but you would see that the shoe sizes line up really well with reading skills. And so it seems like the shoe size is affecting reading skills. Well, obviously that doesn't make sense. Like shoe size doesn't have anything to do with reading. But there's a third variable, age. Okay, age is the confounding variable. Because age affects shoe size. And age also affects reading skills because as students get older, their shoe sizes get bigger. And as they get older, their reading skills improve. So it looks like the shoe size is affecting reading skills, but it's not, okay? It's actually age is affecting shoe size and age is affecting reading skills. And so it looks like there's something going on, but it's really just the, that confounding variable age. Okay, we can still say though, that shoe size is associated with reading skills because it can still give me information about it. Like if I tell you something that has a really big shoe size, you could probably guess that they're going to be reading better because you're going to guess that they're actually pretty old. Okay. So they are associated, they can give you useful information, but it's not actually a cause and effect happening there. So let's look at this for the penguin study. Suppose the researcher had been worried that bands would hurt the penguins, so we put the 50 bands on the weaker penguins. Okay. Would that, have, because he thought that they wouldn't be surviving anyways, and so he wanted to like hurt the weaker ones, not the ones that had a higher chance of surviving. So would that affect how many penguins survived in each group? Well, if you only put penguins in the weak group, does that affect your survival rates? Yes. So if you only put weak penguins in the metal band group, then that group is going to have low survival rates. Okay. Um, so could the difference in the conditional proportions, 32% of the penguins with bands being alive and 60% of penguins with no bands being alive, could that difference be caused by the difference in which penguins he put in each group instead of being caused by the bands? Okay, so are these survival rates due to just putting weak penguins in the metal band group? Yes, I think that could be logical. So in this case, what is the confounding variable? It, the confounding variable is if the penguins are weak or strong. Okay, so our confounding variable is if penguins are weak or strong. So we want to draw a diagram. These are the diagrams that you'll see in this textbook. So we start off with our penguins. Our penguins were our observational units. And then we divide them into two groups, the metal bands, okay, or, sorry, this was supposed to say no bands. Okay. And so that's your explanatory variable is it's which group they're in. What, they either have the metal bands or they don't have the metal bands. The problem here with this study is that you have this confounding variable either weak penguins or strong penguins. And the weak penguins were in the metal bands group and the strong penguins were in the no bands group. And so this confounding variable is actually messing up our results. Because then we look at the survival rates from both groups. But again, this confounding variable of the weak and strong penguins is going to mess with all of our results. So the explanatory variable, whether or not they have metal bands, seems to be affecting the survival rates. But really, the confounding variable, whether they are weak or strong, it might actually be the one affecting the survival rates. And there's no way for us to tell which variable is actually affecting the survival rate. So that's one possible confounding variable. Now, I didn't know a lot about the study, so I kind of made these up. If you could go back and look at the study, and if you were a biologist, maybe you could figure out other confounding variables that would make sense. Um, so another one that I thought could be possible is suppose the researcher hadn't bothered to randomly select which penguins were in which group. Instead, he just put the bands on 50 penguins that were shipped out first. And the ones that were shipped out first happened to go to a hostile environment. And he didn't put the bands on the 80 penguins that shipped out the next day to a much more friendly environment. Could that affect how many penguins survived in each group? Well, yes, because if it was hostile, they are likely to die, okay, and friendly would be likely to live. Okay. 
So could the difference in the conditional proportions, the 32% they're alive with bends and 60% they're alive with no bends, be caused by the difference in which penguins we put in each environment instead of being caused by the actual bands? Well, yes. So what is the confounding variable here? It's which environment? And so then you draw the diagram. So first you start with the penguins. And they can get shipped out, or, well, they either have the metal bands, or no metal, or no bands. Okay, and then you compare their survival rates. And this is our observational units. This is your explanatory variable. And this is your response variable. Okay. Um, but you do need to look at a possible confounding variable, which in this case is which environment. So the metal bands happen to go to the hostile environment, and the no bands happen to go to the friendly environment. Okay, and so it looks like the bands are affecting the survival rates, but really it's the environment affecting the survival rates. And so those confounding factors just mess with all of our results. Okay, then association versus causation. Two variables are associated if they give us information about each other, or if we can like find patterns between them. But association usually doesn't mean that we can show cause and effect. So for example, hurricanes in the U.S. are given names since 1979. Both male and female names have been used, alternating between feminine and masculine names. According to an article published in 2014, hurricanes in the U.S. that were given male names caused significantly more deaths than hurricanes that were given female names. So in this case, what is the explanatory variable? What are we trying to use to explain something? That would be if they had female or male names. And that would be categorical because it's categories, not numbers. What is the response variable? Okay, let's see. They cause significantly more deaths. So it looks like we're counting the number of deaths. So my response variable, variable would be number of deaths. And because it's something with numbers or counting, numerical, it would be quantitative. See, so do the variables seem to be associated? Well, it didn't give me numbers to look at, but it did say that the male names caused more deaths. So I would say, yes, they do seem to be associated. Somehow there's some kind of cause and effect. I don't really know maybe how this is working, but somehow knowing if it's a female or male name gives me some information about how many deaths there were. And I think I accidentally said cause and effect, but I don't mean cause and effect. I just mean that somehow something seems to be happening here. Um, do you think that there is a cause and effect relationship between the variables? Can we just give all hurricanes feminine names and then the hurricanes won't cause as many deaths? Okay, which would be really nice, right? Well, obviously not. Okay, there's nothing that says the hurricane is paying attention to the name and if we give it a feminine name, it suddenly decides to calm down. Like, that's not going to affect anything, right? So the names aren't affecting the hurricanes. So the names can't affect hurricanes. So sometimes we have these weird associations that we really can't explain. It's more just like random chance. Okay. If you look at enough data sets, eventually there, you find interesting associations that don't have anything to do with anything to do with each other. Okay, let's see, more examples. So one study surveyed randomly selected U.S. adults about their opinions on gun ownership. One question they asked was whether they supported a specific bill about gun ownership. So 57.9% of Republicans said yes, 18.1% of Democrats said yes, and 38.1% of Independents said yes. So what are the observational units? What did they actually collect data on? They collected data on U.S. adults. So... The observational units are the actual adults in whatever sample they took. 
what is the explanatory variable? It looks like they're talking about Republicans, Democrats, Independents. So it looks like it's their political affiliation. And that's categories. You are Republicans, Democrats, or Independents for this. So categorical. And what is the response variable? Okay. It's whether they supported the bill. So whether they supported the bill. So whether they support the bill. And that would also be categorical. And does the data suggest that there's an association between political party affiliation and opinion on gun laws? Well, they didn't give me any of the raw data, but just looking at these percentages, or if I change them to proportions, okay, they seem to be different among the groups. So we have different percentages, or proportions, if that's where you're going, but right now we have percentages. So different percentages in each group mean there is an association. Let's see. A study followed 1,002 people aged 18 to 85 for 12 weeks. They asked them to record whether or not they exercised five plus days a week and whether or not they got a cold. So what are the observational units? That would be the actual people. That's what they collected the data on. Okay. What is the explanatory variable? It is whether or not they exercise. And that would be categorical. What is the response variable? And classify that. So the response variable is whether or not they get a cold. And that would also be categorical. And can you think of a possible confounding variable? I can think of lots of different possible confounding variables. You can probably think of others. And that's okay if we think of different confounding variables. Okay. So what are some things that might affect like whether or not you're exercising and also whether or not you get sick. Okay. So we could look at family history, like some families exercise more, but genetics also affects how sick you get. Um, you could look at um, how concerned they are with being healthy. So like the level of health concern, like healthy or like people that are concerned with their health okay. tend to exercise more, eat better, sleep more, drink water, and all of that makes them less likely to get sick. Okay. You could also be like maybe age, maybe really old people can't exercise, and they also get sick more. Okay. So those are all different possible confounding factors. There are probably more you could come up with. Let's draw a diagram with a possible confounding factor. So I'm going to just say like overall health. So we start off with our observational units. Center this a little bit better. So we have our observational units. which are our people. So we take our people and then we divide them into two groups. Okay, or in this case, they divide themselves into two groups, the ones that exercise or don't exercise. And then we compare whether or not they get colds. Okay, so our exercise or not is our explanatory variable. 
and whether or not they get cults is our response variable. Okay, but the problem is we might have a lurking variable, sorry, a confounding variable. Different textbooks have different things that they call it. Okay, so the people that exercise are probably just healthier overall. We'll call it like the healthy group. And the ones that don't exercise are maybe the not healthy group, just overall. Okay, and so maybe it's the healthy or not healthy that is actually affecting whether or not you get cold and not the exercising. And one more. Are puppies in the animal shelter more likely to be adopted in their first week there compared to older dogs? So 278 of the 321 puppies sampled were adopted in the first week, and 472 out of the 649 older dogs were adopted in the first week. Okay. Notice on this one, I left you a blank table. You have to figure out where to put everything. So I'm going to say I'll put young puppies here in the first column and older dogs in the second column. Okay. And this would be like my total. And across my rows, I could put adopted. And then I could put not adopted. And then I could have a total. Now let's see if I can read. So 278 of 321 puppies were, they were sampled. Oh, so I said young. I should make that puppies. So 278 puppies were adopted. And then it said there were a total of 321 puppies. So to figure out what goes in that not adopted, you just subtract. So you do 321 minus 278. And I get... 43. And then for the older dogs, it says 472 out of 649 were adopted. So there were 472 that were adopted, but there were 649 total old dogs. And if you want to know how many were not adopted in that age group, you do 649 minus the 472. So that gives you 177. And then to find these totals over here, you just add up what's in your row. So you add up the 278 and the 472. So 278 plus 472 gives me 750. Okay. And if I add up 43 and 177, I get 220. And if I add those up, 750 plus 220 gives me 970. And let's just double check by adding up these totals. So add up the 321 and 649, and that gives me 970. So you should add your total should add up whether you're going across the rows or down, sorry, across the columns or down through the rows, you should get the same grand total here. Let's see, what are the observational units? That's the actual dogs. That's what we collected data on. What is the explanatory variable? It would be puppy versus old. That would be categorical. And what is the response variable? The response variable, what we're measuring is whether or not they are adopted in the first week. So whether or not adopted, which is also categorical. So let's find some of the conditional proportions. So what proportion of puppies were adopted in the first week? So notice how I put this table here because I want you to be able to draw on it. So what proportion of puppies, so I only care about the puppies, so circle that, were adopted in the first week. So how many were adopted? So the 278 out of a total of 321 puppies were adopted in the first week. So 278 divided by 321 gives me 0.866. Let's see, what proportion of older dogs are adopted in the first week? So I only care about the older ones. So that's 472 older ones that were adopted out of a total of 649. So 472 divided by 649 gives me 0.7272. Does the data suggest an association between type of dog and adoption rates? Well, the conditional proportions are different here. So the conditional proportions are different in each group. So there is an association. I can't say cause and effect necessarily, but I can say there is some association I can say that the puppies do seem to be adopted faster. At least there's something going on here. Maybe there's a confounding factor. Okay, I can't say cause and effect, but I can say that they're associated. Um, for practice, let's practice finding some other conditional proportions. Okay. 
So sometimes the conditional proportions, we're going to ask you because we want to figure out if there's an association or not. Sometimes we're just asking you to practice finding conditional proportions. Okay. Um, so it might be one, so it wouldn't even be useful to answer the question of if there's an association. So for example, this one says, what proportion of dogs adopted in the first week are older dogs? So we're saying, what proportion of dogs adopted in the first week? So that means I'm actually going to switch and look at the row. So I only care about the ones that were adopted. So of the ones that were adopted, which ones were older? So there were 472 that were adopted out of a total of 750. Now you have to be really careful here because we are looking at what proportion of dogs were adopted in the first week. So I have to look at the row. And so I look at the row total here. So what proportion of dogs not adopted? So now I only care about the ones that were not adopted are puppies. So there were 43 puppies out of a total of 220. And finally, can you think of any possible confounding factors? Maybe you can think of some. I was having a hard time thinking of any for this one because puppies are just obviously so cute. Who wouldn't want a puppy? Okay, but maybe it is the cage location is what I thought of. So like maybe the smaller cages that fit puppies are at the front of the store. So more visitors see the puppies or see them first. So maybe if they just move the older dogs to the front store, maybe more older dogs will get adopted. Who knows? You can also think of other confounding factors yourself.